So today let's explore this personal weighing scale, or bathroom scale, or whatever it's called. Let's see what's inside of it, how does it work, and what failed in it. I've been using it for some time and it worked until now. And I also noticed one trick in the software they're using to cheat you. Let's try it for the last time. And yes, I put new batteries in it. And it still says low. Now it's somehow stuck. Not working. Show some nonsense. Well, I'm not about 20 or 30 kilograms. Completely random nonsense. And so I tried multiple different surfaces, multiple different batteries, it just doesn't work. We've actually gained about 60 kilograms in a couple minutes. I should really reduce the burgers, shouldn't I? And now I shouldn't walk too close to a fan, I could fly away. But now let's explore it. Here are the four feet of it. And the battery space, 2032 lithium battery in it. It's made by Professor. You could switch the units when it was still working. Is there any beeper? It never made any sound. Another DV1500 for X. No interesting information on this. We have to open it to see something interesting, of course. There are some screws. Then this should come off. There's really not much of it in it. The battery holder here, a tiny board with a chip under a blob, a couple SMD capacitors here, the button to switch the units, the LCD display, and this conductive rubber, or actually a redundant elastomeric connector, and four strain gauges here, under these feet, and that's basically all it is. I guess the bottom part is just two more strain gauges and nothing else. Of course. There's really not much to go wrong, but also not much to fix if it does. Two more strain gauges here, identical to the other ones. Now a closer look at the board. It has five screws. Not much to see here, really. And the display. Looking at one of the strain gauges here. It basically measures the weight based on the deformation of this piece of metal. And of course it has four, so the result is the sum of all four of them. I think I've already explained the strain gauge in more detail when I was exploring one of these pocket scales. Yes, behind these holes for a beeper, there is no beeper actually installed. And yes, small pocket scales or kitchen scales are using just one strain gauge, which is in a full wheatstone bridge configuration. The bathroom scales are using four half bridges, which produce one bridge. And you're screaming, two half bridges would make one bridge, but here it's four half bridges and two resistances from two different ones are always in a series, forming just one resistor in a wheatstone bridge circuit. There are four strain gauges, each has three wires. And this suggests they're half bridges. Unlike the full bridge in this one with four wires. And the red wires seem to be the center point of the half bridges. Also this actually suggests the same thing. The red one is in the middle. In all four of them the red one comes from the middle of it. And these two white wires are just interconnected on the board. They don't go anywhere else. The same applies to this pair of white wires. And this pair of black ones is also interconnected on the board. And this pair of black ones. And this trace is going between the two black ones, and this one between the other two black ones. And two red wires say E plus and E minus, excitation plus and excitation minus. This is where the DC voltage is connected to the bridge. And the other two red say S plus and S minus, the sensing ones. To make it clear, let's draw the schematic how the four half bridges are configured. This is inside one strain gauge, second one, third one, and the fourth one. And the corners basically form series pairs of resistors, which work in the bridge as one resistor. And in these series pairs, each resistor comes from a different half bridge, a different strain gauge. 
and the DC supply voltage is connected to this terminal and this terminal. When the scale is loaded, a small differential voltage comes from this one and this one. The voltage between them is basically proportional to the weight. And of course the gauges have to be oriented in such a way that when the scale is loaded, this one, this one, this one and this one are compressed so the resistance is reduced. These are stretched so the resistance is increased or the other way. But always the four resistors in the opposing corners have to change their resistance the same. The four resistors in the other opposing corners go the other way. I think I have the white and black marking reversed, but anyway. This is more or less how all scales with four strain gauges work. And the half bridge strain gauge is just basically a pair of two resistive traces with one common terminal and each trace goes several times one way and the other. And this is glued on a metal bar which is deformed by the force. And these resistive traces deform with it. So one of them is stretched, increasing its resistance, and one of them is compressed, reducing its resistance. When it's not loaded, they are balanced. But when it's loaded, one stretches and one shrinks. And these traces are on a piece of plastic film, which is basically just stuck this way onto this. And the centerpiece of this is basically deformed into an S-shape in this area. So the operating principle of this is really quite simple. What are the actual resistances? 878 ohms, 876, it's all very close. 876, 877, this, 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 and this. Basically 877 plus minus 1 ohm, all very close. So it seems the strain gauges are not damaged, it's probably the chip. What voltage does it apply to the bridge? 2.38 volts. And then it turns off automatically. It seems to be testing it in very short pulses, saving the battery when it's not in use, of course. If put it back together, the way the chip applies the voltage to the bridge seems okay, but it still doesn't work. And using a power supply instead of the battery. It doesn't seem to help. It's showing some nonsense again. To test the strain gauges, let's completely avoid all the electronics in it and just connect a 5 volt power supply straight to this bridge here and here and a multimeter here and here. It's showing minus 1 millivolt. There's a slight offset in them which normally is subtracted by the chip. And I have a 14 kilogram dumbbell. Let's try to apply it to the first one. It goes up by about 0.6 millivolts. The second one, again 0.6 millivolts difference. The third one again 0.6 millivolts. And the last one, well it changes by 20 millivolts, 15 millivolts. It's kind of random. This one is acting completely different than the other three. The change was partially irreversible. In the other three the change was reversible. This all went to what it was before. So is this one broken? The other three seem to work normally. And it's probably normal for them to have low sensitivity. The differential signal really is just a couple millivolts at most. And the chip has to have some built-in instrumentation amplifier with quite some gain in it. So yes, I'm taking it back. It's not the chip bad. It's one of these four gauges. Maybe somebody jumped on this corner, overloading it and distorting the metal irreversibly. It's one of the rear ones, which would make sense. When you're trying to get on the scale, you might rapidly step on one of the rear corners and overload it by the momentum or by concentrating all the weight on one of them instead of distributing it between all four. I even tried swapping these two to see if the problem isn't in the way they are mounted, but it's not. The same strain gauge load cell still acts weird. So the conclusion is a bad strain gauge. It could be repairable if I could find the exact same one, but maybe even pieces of the same type might be slightly different and it might have been somehow calibrated in the manufacture, so it wouldn't be as accurate with a different one. And the way this thing works is that the chip keeps applying in short pulses the supply voltage and basically probing if it's in use to save the battery. And if it's actually in use it applies the supply voltage continuously and does the measurement. And it has to average reading for multiple seconds to cancel the random fluctuations. 
because a human is a difficult load to weigh, it's a constantly moving weight, it's not a break. And the output of the bridge goes into a high-gain differential amplifier or an instrumentation amplifier contained in the chip, then it goes into an analog-to-digital converter, and after several seconds of averaging it displays the final result, which might be multiplied by a certain calibration constant stored in the chip during the manufacture, but it also keeps automatically zeroing out cancelling out the offset of the bridge of the strain gauges and also the own weight of the device. But on top of it, the software in the chip kind of cheats you. When the weight reading is close enough to the previous reading, it actually displays the previous reading. And this is probably to hide the random errors in the measurement. This makes it look more consistent than it actually is. If the reading differs from the previous one only by 0.1 or 0.2 kilograms, it actually shows the previous reading. This is what I noticed when it was still working. I don't like it, I call it cheating, because I'd prefer it displaying the actual reading. But if it was showing the raw reading, because of the random noise it would basically show a slightly different reading, even if the same person steps on it just 10 seconds later, which would of course make it look bad. So that's it, a typical weighing scale. And if you like my videos, please consider subscribing, supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button. And big thanks to all of you who already support me and keep this channel alive.